We had a lot of um, questions and wonders about our research that weren't written up in any of our papers or, or our scholarship um, that we brought to the table um, around the um, materiality of our research and, um, and what was occurring that we weren't writing about. We were watching a video, I think it was from your project, where, um, where the kids were using an iPad, uh, they were using ScribJab mm -hmm. um, to create their stories through text and, and uh, images. And you had accidentally, I think, caught some girls uh, playing with yeah. each other's <laughs> hair. And uh, in our normal methods, we can't really document this playing with the hair, but we all felt that this was an important part of their, of the girl, the children's affective engagement with yeah. each other, yeah. and and couldn't find methods that allowed us really to grapple with that and to understand how and why it was important. And one of the things about that was that it was a surprising thing for us to see that emerge uh, at the same time as a calming, soothing um, effect in the group. And we'd been focusing before that on other kinds of dynamics. And so right. we, we started to recognize how really important that was when we were considering uh, the material and the human and the discursive and the temporal and and the intensities all coming together in that particular moment. And that um, there's a whole bunch of theories on one side and a whole bunch of theories on the other side. And we have our training in each one of the sides. And so how could we help bring these things together to be able to um, talk about these complex environments that we're, we're, we're studying and that we're a part of? The thing I liked about it was the interdisciplinarity. I, really didn't ever think in my career I would work with a math educator <laughs> or early childhood or, or the other fields. And it's just been consistently interesting to, to work with people and to understand a little bit about other fields. I think other aspects that sustained us are also that we have in common uh, that we're all, you know, mothers and, um, and women together. And there was uh, a lot of, um, we found each other in those ways, and I think that helped to sustain each other in our conversations that we had that weren't always about work. <laughs> and that was, that was a nice part of the relational approach. In academic research, when you think about putting a book together with this many people, it's obviously going to be an edited book. And certainly, we each had our different research sites, and so it was sort of natural to think of it that way. But we wanted to really think about writing this book uh, together. We went to Margaret's cabin one weekend, and uh, before the meeting, we'd all read each other's stuff and made comments on it. And I don't recommend this as a way to write a book with, <laughs> with six people, because it was very time consuming, but also lots of fun. In a real sense, we were co-authors of, of the whole book. I mean, I contributed stuff to the chapter that you started to write, and you know, and, and vice versa. So we were moving in and out of uh, each other's texts, and our combined they became our combined texts as we were commenting on th them, and that was sort of a virtual move as we were doing this over email. And then we also got together in person and were together physically in the same room, editing the text, talking looking at the text up on it's projected up on the wall and then and then editing it together and then also it was very much a bodily uh, experience because we were together over a few days and we there was a lot of food and drink involved in this and we went for walks a number of uh, lovely walks together and had conversations about all sorts of things and kept coming back to this text that we were weaving together and moving in and out of well, we're trying to find something new. <laughs> and of course, we know that, but sometimes we forget that. Because if we're using the same theories, mm. um, and often the same research sites um, and same um, methods all the time, we're probably not going to find a lot new, right? And I know that I was getting a little tired with the same old patterns of critique uh, that Latour talks about, you know, the matters of concern and matters of uh, fact and that critique maybe has run out of steam and I really like the idea of diffraction as a way of bringing different theories, different concepts into open, more prize open 
and look for new things. Rather than a sort of mirroring of reality or a, look at, a turning back um, to interpret, it creates openings. It creates um, interference between ideas, between practices. And that's what I think is really exciting when we think of education. Part of the take of new materialism is that you aren't applying theories um, or solutions to your situation but your work is really to come up with the problem because the problem defines the solution. So if you don't do that backtracking work, um, that coming together, figuring out what the problem is, um, you're not doing new materialism and you're, you're certainly not doing anything interdisciplinary. It's hard not to also think about the challenges that we've had to keep this work moving forward. And I like to think sometimes about how can we keep it in a restless place so that we are continuing to think of new ways. I think it runs up against the uh, st uh, students and the tradition in research methods courses in education on presenting particular doxas for methodologies and we've, we've moved away from that and we're wanting to be sure that we know how to support our students mm -hmm. as they find what it is that is most appropriate for the questions that they're asking and the particular locations where they're doing their research and and remembering how how they also shape the what the research is about through the language and the apparatus that they use in their to research it's true like our students um, are but bravely diving in um, and in a certain bravery that they have, that they're just going forward with this, and we're kind of, I am anyway, trying to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> to me that uh, we have certain structures and ways of being that are quite embedded in being teachers and looking at how we can best understand knowledge and knowledge making practices, and we tend to fall very heavily onto representation, which tends to really um, drive a lot of our thinking, in fact, in, in, and our pedagogy. The, the um, new materialism helps us think about that because instead of thinking about our intellectual work, even our innovations, as displacing what was there before, which is a common, uh, common way of moving forward in, in all areas of academics, where now we're gonna do post whatever, because we're throwing away the stuff that came before, so you're always being sequential about your way forward, that we c can try and be more, think more in terms of superposition, that these, thing can, these things can exist alongside each other, and representation isn't something we throw out, but we're aware of what it brings along, but sometimes it will be useful and, we can, and it can exist even though it might not um, exist very smoothly with some other things. That that's unsmoothness is what gives rise to some of the, the, the new ideas and the new insights and the new ways we have of moving forward in, in our work. My son does improv and yes and is the one rule of improv. As you say, we're not trying to replace other methods or concepts. It's and, yes, and. Um, and one of the students uh, in the seminar, Sam, said, is this an improv move? Is like, is improv part of new materialism? <laughs> <laughs> and we're, I was like, yes, of course, because what yes and is, is um, in, improv is all about, you can't go through with a scene of improvisation if you refuse what came before because the scene dies. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when um, my son and his friends did their show and there was an open gambit of, you know, opening with a, an idea and one of the kids said no and wanted to change it and the facilitator stopped the scene and made them do it again because it's the only rule of improv is that you have to build on and respond to what, what the offering is of the other in the room, whether a human or non-human. So I thought, well, maybe we could do an improv version of <laughs> <laughs> new materiality. <laughs>